Hey everybody, welcome back again. So, another quick job on the Jeep, or I hope is a quick job, on the old Jeep CJ7. I finally got the, the dash, all the extra holes in it welded back up. It still looks pretty rough, but yeah, you know what? That's okay. So, I got two projects I want to do 3D printing for. I think the first one I'm going to do are these holes in the dash. These things went in it. And these have electrical contacts on the back. There's a little light in the front. And they tell you what each control that they go in. And there's six of them. There's lights and wipers and defrost and heat and fan and all that. And they light up when you at night when you turn the lights on. Now, all of mine are either cracked and broken up. You can't read them. They look like shit. Or the, they're just trash in one way or another. But, um... You buy a whole set of these for 25 bucks, but you know what? I don't want to spend 25 bucks on it, and I don't need them to light up at night. So I'm just going to bundle all this extra wiring up in the back, but I want to print something, not only that fills the hole up properly, but um, also does indicate what it does. So I think for that, I'm going to use my GTEC A10M dual filament printer, and I'm going to try and print the body in white, and then the top... I'm going to have some logo on it that just indicates what it does. And like I say, I don't care if it lights up at night. The other thing I'm going to do, I've got some parts to print that go inside the speedometer, but we're going to do that in another video. So let's get over to Fusion 360 and let me draw this up. I think it'll be real easy to do. Be right back. Okay, so here's the part I'm talking about in Fusion, and right now the top of it is blank because I want to have a blank one to work from before I start adding all the individual, you know, logo or the lettering or whatever I put in the top. Plus, I want to make sure it fits before I, you know, go to any huge length. And as always, I added all my parameters in first. I've become something of a fanatic about getting that done, trying to get as many of the measurements in as I can first. Now, some of these I added later on as I went along, but I'd say well over half of them I got in first from measuring the original part and also measuring the hole in the dash. And I know people hate Fusion 360 tutorials, so I'm not going to do that. But um, I'm going to go through you real, with you real quickly how I did it in case anybody's interested. If somebody wants to know more, they can ask me. So let's go back to my original sketch. And the original sketch was just a rectangle of the width of the body. I extruded that up. Then I created another sketch on the very top. Didn't I? Oh yeah, there it is. I'm sorry. I created another sketch. I extruded that up. And then I created yet another sketch. Whoops, let me get... And this sketch has the amount that I want to dish it down in. I had originally just extruded up the edge of the rim. And then I was going to, going to fillet it or, or um, chamfer it to give it strength to hold the rim onto the body but fusion wouldn't let me it would only it would only let me chamfer or or um fill it in the wrong direction and that's been a problem for me in fusion for a long time so i just did it both up as a solid block and then i made this rectangle here that's a dish to go down i extruded it down and wound up with that and then I wanted the um, I wanted the locking lugs, and if we look at the locking lugs, these are the lugs that prevent it from coming out once you shove it in. Otherwise, it'll come right back out. So I drew I, I made my I drew my rectangle with my parameters. I um come on come on. I've had too much coffee today and my hands are getting a little wobbly. Then I extruded my rectangle out and then I put a very long, low chamfer on it so that it would slide in and lock. And what I wanted to do was I wanted, rather than draw all four of these, I wanted to mirror it from side to, from over here to over here and then mirror both from side to side. And, you know, sometimes in Fusion 360, you know, it would maybe take me an extra five, six, seven, maybe ten minutes to draw all four of these separately. I probably dinked around with the, the mirror thing for longer than that because it didn't want to do it. Normally how I mirror 
is I mirror features and then I pick the features I want in this case the extrusion and the chamfer and I mirror it over there and it normally works this time it just kept giving the error message so I had to mirror using faces and click on all five faces of this and then that let me mirror it over to there and then I had to select all 10 faces in another mirror and that let me mirror it the other side and that's my finished part so I'm just going to print this in some PLA that I have a bunch of I'm obviously going to have to have support for the rim around there I have thought about just chamfering this out so I don't need support but you know what I really want it to fit flush against the dash and look good so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it with support I can't really print it like that because I want my lettering in here plus I want to do I'm going to when I finally get the last one in I am going to do a I have to figure out how I'm going to get the lettering in a different okay, color so I got the part off the printer in fact I've actually got three of them off the printer because I came out with version one and I printed it in this um, natural colored PLA, I think it's Jarrys, and I had a heck of a time getting the support off of it. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I've had worse. But um, it's too big. It didn't fit at all. So um, I decided, plus it doesn't look to me like it was going to show on camera very well. So I went to the other film and I had loaded in. This is the, um, this is the red Polymaker Polyterra. And I went to this because support comes off so easy with this filament. So this is the one I printed. I just made this bottom base one millimeter smaller in both directions and in, in, um, in width and length. And it fits, but I got a small problem. And let me zoom down here a little bit. Maybe you can see it. See those holes have that odd shaped opening on one side. And I think they did that so that you couldn't put the stupid light in upside down. Because once you push those in, they lock in and you about got to wreck them to get them out. So I figured they were probably trying to save you from yourself. There's a hump on one side and it can only be put in one way. So when I put mine in, I don't know if you can see it, but my locking lug is almost off into that hole and I didn't like it. So I went back to the drawing board one more time and I printed one that just has one locking lug in the center and um, that should be more than enough I haven't shoved one in yet but um, let's try it right now I've stuck it in there to kind of make sure it would fit but I haven't forced it in because it ain't going to be easy to get it back out again I may wind up having to bust it but let's try it oh that wasn't too bad Yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, it wobbles around a little bit, but it fits in snug and it won't come out. Um, I could probably up that by a quarter of a millimeter or maybe even half a millimeter. So now that I have a design and a size that I like for the blank one, I want to go ahead and put the lettering in. And you can see I've already done it in these others. And all you do to put the lettering in is create a sketch on this surface here. And um, then under here, there'll be create and text. And then you just put in what you want. And I just use the center tool to center it. And then I extruded it up. And um, I extruded it up above the level of the rim to give it a little extra spot for the printer to change the color of the filament since that's kind of what I want it also gives it kind of a cool 3d look that I think is cool so anyway there is um five in total I think there's air defrost fan lights temp and wipers so I'm going to print these all out. I know it's going to take some fiddling to get the printer to do what I want it to do. But when I get that done, I'll be back and show them to you. Okay, so this video has kind of got long because of all the trial and error that I've had to do to get just exactly what I wanted. I've probably printed 20 of these things. I'm not sure what which ones of the previous video clips are going to make the cut and what's not. So just to recap real quickly, the first ones I did were just a blank, had no writing on them. And they had four locking lugs, two on each side. Then I went back in later when I realized that two of the locking lugs were going off the side of this expanded hole. 
I changed the two locking lugs or the four locking lugs to just two. I tweaked the sizes up and down. Then I put, you know, the, um, the writing in it that I wanted. And then I goofed around trying to get the, um, the writing to come out with a different color. And then I finally, finally got what I wanted. And you can see the one in there that says fan. Here are the others. And um, I'll put these all on Thingiverse, of course. For those of you who want to print them, and um, if you have a dual filament printer like myself, and here they are. If you have a dual filament printer like myself, you can you can do this. And if you have a single filament printer, you can just pause it at the height that the lettering just begins to start and swap filament. Or if you're a good hand with a paintbrush or a paint stick, you can simply paint the tops of the lettering. But for now, let's get the rest of them in. Okay, sorry about that. Fan goes on the top, then air, then temp, then defrost, then wipers, and then lights over there. So I'm going to put them all in and let's see what it looks like when it's done. So, temp and defrost, so we're going to put air in here, and There we go. So, let me get the camera off the mount and I will um, zoom in and show them to you as best I can. Well, you know what? I don't even need I just zoom in right there, huh? And then I'll just move the panel itself. We turn the light on. Should have done that to begin with. And there we go. Fan, air, temp, defrost, wipers, and lights. And I just scratched the front of that up real well. Oh well. And as you can see, they fit in snugly from the back. They won't come out. And they might rattle a little bit, but in a CJ7, you'd never notice something rattling slightly. And uh, let me zoom back out and get a look at the whole thing. If we can. And there is the whole thing. So, like I say, I don't need them to light up. I kind of like that a lot, and um, I think that'll work really well for me. Everything will be on Thingiverse, and um, then they'll be there in case you want to print them and use them yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, hit notifications, and if you see uh, something in one of my Amazon affiliate links below, I would appreciate it if you'd use those links. Thanks, and bye for now.